In this video, I'm going to teach you how to the quantitative reasoning. Hi, and welcome back to Future Doc. My name is Dr. Ashley Hilton. I'm a doctor and a dentist, and this is the channel where we make your application to medical school absolutely bulletproof. And today in this video, I'm going to teach you how to knock the quantitative reasoning completely out of the park. So quickly, let's define the quantitative reasoning. So UCAT say that the quantitative reasoning subtest assesses your ability to use numerical skills to solve problems. It assumes that you have the numerary skills to give it a good pass at GCSE. However, it's important to remember that it's actually more about the problem solving element and that's because as a doctor you often get numbers thrown at you and you have to infer what's important and use a bit of data interpretation to get the crux of what's going on with the patient so let's have a look at exactly what's involved and then I'm going to give you some tips towards the end to absolutely smash this to get the highest score and do it within the pressured time frame of the UCAT exam so the main thing is the section is looking at your mathematical skills to help you solve problems that means the numeracy skills will involve stuff like charts, graphs, tables. The important thing to know is that it is not a maths test. It's using maths to solve problems. So if you're good at maths and have good numeracy skills, please do not underestimate this section. Right, so let's quickly break down this section. Boom, it is nine questions. Each question stem will give you a graph or a table or a piece of information, and then you'll be asked four questions about that piece of information. That means nine stems times four questions per stem is a total of 36 questions in the quantitative reasoning. You get a minute at the start to compose yourself, gather your thoughts, get zen before you attack it. Then you get 23 minutes to attempt all those 36 questions, which gives you about 40 seconds per question. But for this section, I want you to think of it more as a question stem as a whole, because a lot of the time is going to be dedicated to understanding what's going on with the graph, and then you'll dedicate a disproportionate amount of time to the individual questions. And the final thing is that each question is multiple choice with five possible answers. So there are a variety of ways that they can present the information mathematically to you. And those are graphs and tables, charts and pie charts, diagrams, 2D and 3D shapes. And sometimes the information is just purely in a text box. So let's look at the areas of math that they test. Now these are in ascending of most common. So the first is your basic arithmetic, which is about a third of the questions. Then they look at percentages, which is about a quarter. Averages make about 10% of the questions. And then we have loads of fun stuff like fractions, decimals, ratios, then common formulae. So things like speed, distance, and time calculations. And let's not of course forget the good old 2D and 3D geometric shapes. And after that, I bet you're excited with just how much fun this test is going to be. But actually, if you want, you can check out my full UCAT course where I go through all the types of questions and the quickest ways and little hacks that you can do to save time whilst increasing accuracy for all of the type of questions that come up in the UCAT. But now I'm going to come on to the most important thing, which is my approach to the section and the tips that you need to do to succeed and go fast and accurately in this exam. So my suggestions for this section basically involve two things. The first is to make sure that you only do the calculations that you need to do. You might get tricked into thinking that there's a lot of numbers to work out and a lot of data to crunch but actually sometimes when you just take a step back take a 30,000 foot bird's eye view of what's going on you actually realize that there's only maybe one or two calculations sometimes you can actually answer it without looking and doing any calculations at all the second and most important is having good confidence in your mental maths if you can do equations memorize them in your head memorize your times table you will go infinitely faster than somebody who's having to use the calculator and that is the main thing that's going to speed you up and get you through all the questions of this exam because remember the biggest reason for people not scoring highly is because they simply don't complete the exam it's very time pressured it's fast paced and the quicker and more accurately you can go the better you'll do that said there are times that you are going to need to use the calculator but it is the slowest thing I've ever come across I have literally seen milk turn faster than this calculator you have to switch screens to access it then you have to use a keyboard and a mouse to enter the numbers and the only thing that you can do with it is add subtract multiply and divide and it is slow AF so the more that you can limit the calculator use the better. So finally, that brings me on to my tips. And they are basically the two things that I said before. Make sure that your mental math is hot so that you can save time and just do things quickly. And secondly, remember that it's a logic exam. So just use your head, work out what exactly you need to calculate and you can eliminate calculations and answers that you don't need to do just by thinking logically through the questions. So if you don't wanna check out my online course, I have lots more free videos here. So you can check out some UCAT practice questions here and then a full playlist here with loads and loads of lessons. So thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those videos.